We gather from Pittsburgh to Panama, from Antioch to Benicia, from Brentwood, even to Concord. And as we come together as the church, with or without um, our building, we come together as the people of God. And we are the people of Community Presbyterian Church and of First Congregational Church of Antioch. And as we do come together, we love to say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So we're so glad that you are here to be the church together. Our announcements came out in the e-blast and we've been doing our Advent wreaths at home. And um, here's some pictures of some of those Advent wreaths in some of our homes as we recognize this third Sunday of Advent. The announcement page looks like this and um, includes all of the links to our Tuesday morning sacred conversations on race, our Wednesday social hour. Our birthdays this week are Melissa Paniagua, uh, Ezekiel Bellinger, Jacob Brown, Logan Kenny, and Judy Hartz, who we uh, were able to see for the first time in a while with due to her new webcam. Welcome, Judy. And um, I'm going to let Elaine get ready to sing uh, at the end of our announcements here. But a reminder that we're, we are meeting Tuesday for our sacred conversation on race. And we're doing two chapters this week because one of the chapters is really short. So please read chapters 9 to 10 through page 126. And we um, will come together for our Wednesday social hour. And we want to remind you that the alternative gift fair the deadline to order is Tuesday, December 15th. And there's um, cards and gifts that you can order from Habitat for Humanity, Los Madonos College Foundation, Meals on Wheels, the Food Bank, Heifer International, all of that. And uh, the, this week, the Food for Thought uh, Winter Break Group is taking food to folks at the Richmond Unified School District. <clears throat> and we're um, all together uh doing our special holiday offerings on the christmas fund for the ucc and the christmas joy offering for the presbyterian so um uh elaine are you there can you I, lead us in a birthday song for judy i will i will be happy to do that michael if you'll do the waving i'll hit the notes and i'm going to spotlight judy whose birthday it is because we can see her. Happy birthday, Judy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Judy. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, everybody. And many more. <laughs> Happy birthday. And as we um, come to this moment, we recognize that we are now in the third Sunday. Here we go. The third Sunday of Advent. And this week we turn to Luke's writing, which is the account of, of Jesus in two acts, the gospel biography of Jesus and then the story of the early church, the Jesus community. Whether you were a Jew or a Gentile in those days, deciding to become a part of this illegal early Christian movement could bring punishment for your allegiance. Surely the message in both Luke and Isaiah that the downcast, the lowly, the oppressed would rise up is a welcome and inspirational account like the Jewish exiled people of Isaiah's time and like the early Christians, we also sometimes wonder where God is in our suffering. We long to hear the promise that a reason for joyful praise is the good news on the way. You're invited to sing along and you'll be able to see the notes, those of you who read music, uh, as we uh, sing our Advent theme song.
I believe even when. And we can add to that, I believe in peace even when I see violence. And so the invitation is to take your candle now, your real candle, your battery candle, or simply the candle that always lives in your heart. And we are now in this threshold moment as we begin worship, as we step together as a community of faith into the sacred space. On this day that rain has come and we're celebrating the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. So let us now enter into prayer. Holy God, we pray for peace. We pray that the chorus that the angels sang, peace on earth, goodwill to all people, may become a reality. We pray that across the globe where there is violence and discord, where there is disharmony, where there is conflict, where people are at odds, where agreement seems difficult, that your peace will be revealed. As the child was born into Bethlehem, may your peace surprise all of us, come in unexpected places and unexpected ways, and may our hearts be open to recognize the reality and the power of your peace. The infant child became the Prince of Peace, bringing this precious gift to all humanity. And we pray in the name of that child. Amen. And so we begin our service. Allow your hearts to be open. Allow yourself to appreciate the beauty of the rain, the miracle of simply being alive in this time with all of its challenges, with all of its hurts, with all of its sorrow we still believe in God, in love, in the sun, in peace. Amen. I believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in God. Even when. Even when God is silent, I believe in God. I believe in God. Even when, even when God is silent. We believe even when, and we this morning believe in joy, even when we may be feeling the struggle, even when we may not be feeling the joy. We proclaim that joy is powerful and alive in our lives. And we light the third Advent candle, the candle of joy. The place without light, the depth of night, the pit of unknowing, 
and a candle. A candle is lit in the darkness. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depth of joy. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are not sure of your presence, we pray that you ignite the flame of joy within us, that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Amen. Amen. Light one candle to watch for Messiah. Light the darkness, darkness. Evening shall bring the birth of Israel. God fulfills the promise. Light one candle to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. Evening shall be the brave old shepherd. Gently lead them forward. Light three candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. Lift your heads and lift the gateway for the King of Glory. In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps when even our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it is an important act to call out, name and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out and name our trust in the promise of joy. Hear these statements of belief in our opening prayer. I believe that we have sometimes been silent in the face of injustice and I believe that we are capable of raising our voices and insisting on goodness for all. I believe that we have been afraid of feeling deeply, making our joy small, and I believe that the deep joy of community can always be present, even in hard times. I believe that sometimes we wonder if we can make a difference, and I believe that small acts of kindness and help do make a real difference. We believe even when we are discouraged. We believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will offer us hope. Good morning, church. Our opening hymn this morning is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses six and seven. O come now, day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and the dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. All is right. Oh, come desire of nations bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Let in these drop and discord cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And for Advent, this is a time in our service that we um, participate in a guided meditation. I invite you to get in a comfortable position of rest. I invite you to get as quiet and as still as you can, just for a moment. I invite you to a deep breath and a deep listening posture, perhaps eyes closed or fixed, 
on a candle, a peace candle, an advent candle, as we prepare for a time of prayer. Let us breathe deeply together. Listen to these words. The gentle pull of God is often lost amidst the rush of all the obligations which lay a claim on us. Yet just beyond the frantic pace our restless feet have trod lie deep still pools of quietness. Let me say that again. Yet just beyond the frantic pace our restless feet have trod lie deep still pools of quietness, the dwelling place of God. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, be the air I breathe. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, free me to receive. Oh, take me to that secret place where lost in wonder and in awe, the moment comes and I rejoice to be and be with God. Meet me in the stillness, Lord. Be the air I breathe. Meet me in the stillness, Lord. Free me to receive. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you, peace everyone. Peace. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. Peace of Christ, everybody. Peace of Christ. Peace, 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 peace of Christ. To all of you. Peace of Christ. Peace, everyone. Real peace, not as the world gives. And now we enter into a time of prayer. Are there people, places, situations, things in your own life, things in other people's lives, things in the world at large that you would like to raise in prayer? Beginning with Pat's prayer. Pat, before the service started, had requested that we pray for Clyde, one of her clients. So that he may be healed. Lord, hear our, hear prayer. our prayers. Hear our prayers. Yeah. Are there others? Mary. Um, safe journeys for Bill and Barb on their trip to Arizona. Mm. 
Yes. May the force be with you. <laughs> yes. Lord, hear our prayer and keep you safe in a bubble. <laughs> Healthy. Yes. Carol, did you have? Yes. Um, pray for my grandson, not Randy, but the one who lives in Oakley. He has been exposed to COVID in the last few days oh. through his work. And he took a test yesterday, but they don't have results yet. So just pray so, for you. And Oakley has among the highest COVID infection rates among Latinx folks. So we can pray for them as well. Actually, he is half Latino. May he be safe. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayer. Janie? Continued prayers for my great, great niece. She's now two months old, weighs 10 pounds and looking good. Uh, she still needs, um, well, she's having physical therapy, voice therapy, and pacifier therapy. And they put a little screen in her crib so that she can, with goldfish in it, um, so that her eye movement uh, improves. But continued prayers for the parents that struggling. And they're saying that it's uh, going to be another six to eight weeks before the baby can come home. She has to have her oxygen removed and the feeding tube before she can go home. Uh, a long journey. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> Chris. Gary's test came back and she does have cancer again. Um, they're right now trying to schedule her for surgery and that will be removing her bladder so that we can get rid of this stuff because it's spreading too quickly. So prayers for Sherry and for the surgeons who do the operation. Yes. Yes, prayers for Sherry. We're supporting you, Sherry. It's been a long journey, but hopefully the surgery will be the end. Yeah. Lord, hear our prayers. Rose, you're still muted, Rose. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. I, I would like to send prayers to heaven for my father. Today's his birthday. Oh. Beautiful to remember him. <laughs> May there be blessings between our world and the next. Lord, our, our prayers. Bill? Yeah, continued prayers for Ginny, who's going, continues to go through the chemo treatments. So with, um, just hope that she, uh, she does well with it. And prayers for you, Bill. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. prayers. Janice? Janice, you're still muted. Will, are you able to unmute Janice? No, I was only able to put it into a dialogue box for her to okay. unmute. Okay. So um, use the white dialogue box on your screen, Janice. Oh. oh, you had it for a second. Yeah, for a second, it, it was OK. There, there it is. Go. There it is. Good. Prayers for my daughter and son-in-law who are in Hawaii, and their flight has been canceled. So. I have trouble feeling sorry for something. 
Whoops, we can't, we can't hear you. Janice, we're not able to hear you. We, we got the first part for your family that's in Hawaii. So we'll pray for them and assume that the rest of us will understand empathetically what you said. Okay. Lord, hear our prayer. Jeanette, did you have something? You're also muted. Not muted. Jeanette, you're, you're muted. She's probably the same problem. Is, is that go. okay? Yeah. Now, now we hear me. Yeah. Well, I thought you were speaking to me and I said, you know, I wasn't sure my name is Jeanette, but I just want to thank the Lord that I'm able to participate with such a beautiful group and this service and see my mom and my sister. And I'm thankful for all of this and for help for all of us. It's so beautiful that you're able to join us. Thank Lord. you. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayer. Are there others? We resist. We refuse to let hatred in. We rise up. We won't back down. We're in it till the end. We resist. We refuse. Thank you. 
creation story or an evolution story. I mean, the first, the first, the first thing is not a thing. It's a nothing. What on earth is that? And then when it when it starts to move the Spirit of God hovering over the waters, what you get is... And then you have this cataclysmic event. It's pure violence. That is primordial violence. That is the Big Bang. This peace enters your bloodstream and then changes who you are. The entire blueprint of everything, all the way from subatomic particles to galactic clusters, it's all here. We demanded the government to hold a direct dialogue with us students to push the uh, political reform. The government refused. I set up the first broadcast station. I put the cassette of Beethoven live to cover the voice of the government system. There was a real transformation. It gave us a sense of hope, uh, solidarity. All people become brothers. We just felt that oh, we were free at last. We regain our dignity as a human being. For me, that, uh, that was a movement for hope. And the tanks and the machine guns killed that hope. If given a chance to meet one person in history, for me it would be Beta. And the question I would ask him, if I only had one question, would be the Ninth Symphony. The Ninth seems to express most completely what human beings are struggling for. It's a battle cry for humanity. It is the hymn of possibility. In 1973 began a very dark time. Pinochet took the power and he made one of the worst military coup. This dream from, from equality was gone. The music was banished, and happiness was banished. I was in a room with the window, with the uh, iron grid. And one day, I heard the music, only the music. It was like a shield against the fear, against the pain, against the darkness. When you are in the deepest, darkest hole, then you suppose hope.
technically. I don't even know, I'm not even sure I'm a musician. I'm a guitar player. But there's no reason why that should stop me from, uh, from writing the lyrics of Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Night Symphony. You don't have to wait till the London Symphony Orchestra gives you permission or asks you. The fact that I've written the two verses is all the validation I need. There they are. And if I can make those two verses singable by the kids, sit, then great, I'll do that as well. OK, Man of Destiny, here we go. <sighs> Music is something that is mood-enhancing and mind-bending. You can change or enhance that melancholy feeling or that joyous feeling you have. And Beethoven obviously felt that deeply. You can imagine if he, you know, heard his favourite song while he was in the supermarket, it'd stop, it would stop him dead and mess up his day, you know. What this portion of the message is all about that God's um, that God's even even God's um, discipline happens for a season but not forever in our lives so these elites came back um, to uh, to Jerusalem and it was it was Cyrus the Great who allowed them to do so he comes to power he takes over the Babylonian Empire from Persia and he sends the Judeans back to rebuild their temple. And they take the same route that Abraham took from Ur back. And there's this sense that they're um, following in the footsteps of their ancestor as they return to what it means to, to be home in the Eastern Mediterranean, to become a nation once more and to rebuild their temple once more, to recognize that there's a place for them to be able to share their, uh, their, um, their worship of God in that holy place again. And that was a huge deal for so many of the people in that time. And then we hear this amazing, amazing story of, um, uh, of Mary who sings the Magnificat, right? Who, who brings back what does it mean to be able to, um, to live as the people of God, even in a time when Rome was occupying Palestine? And as we recognize this time for her, very, very much different, um, we hear this prayer. Mary goes to visit Elizabeth in that village, and we hear um, this prayer that, that Mary has, that um, exalts God and, and really lifts up God as liberator, this Magnificat. And this prayer is so radical. It's so, um, it's raw, isn't it? And as we um, recognize uh, her need 
400 years later after the exiles returned, they are able to worship in the, um, the temple again, but it's now being controlled by the Romans. And most of the children during that time were, uh, were being named Joshua. They were being named Miriam. They were being named for all of these prophets and prophetesses um, of the previous ages where God was um, a liberator for them. And so when Mary hears the news from the angel, when Mary is able to, um, to, be, uh, uh, to hear this message from God that she was going to be able to play some portion in the work of God and the liberation of the people during that time, we, she sings out this amazing song, this um, ability to, uh, to call for God's healing even in the here and now. And so we hear these words um, <clears throat> from Luke chapter one, um, the Holy Spirit has come over you and the power of the Most High overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. The, this woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. And when Mary accepts this and says, I am the Lord's servant, let it be with me just as you have said, the angel leaves. And, um, and Mary is able to be able to live into this moment of exalting God and recognizing God's amazing love for her and for the people of Israel. And then Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. These, this, this prayer that Mary sings, this song, she says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. And it's at this moment that the, 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 the twin, the not twin, the cousins, uh, Jesus and John the baptizer are um, uh, stir in their mother's wombs. And it's at this moment that Mary and Elizabeth realize that there's something special mm -hmm. about the calling of these boys. And that, um, and that Jesus and John the baptizer might be called to be the revolutionaries that bring about the redemption or the liberation of Israel. There's this other uh, song in our lexicon that has become a song that has become a rallying cry for liberation as well. And you might not realize it, but Beethoven's Ninth Symphony has been used as a song of liberation as well. And it was written in 1824 near the end of Beethoven's life. He was sick and alienated from almost everyone. He was completely deaf. He never really managed to find love or create a family that he had wanted. And yet despite this, he managed to create an anthem of joy that embraces the transcendence of beauty over suffering. And there's a, been a, a movie called Following the Night, the documentary uh, uh, in the footsteps of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which tells this story of how the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony was used in many different uprisings around the world, including um, Tiananmen Square, they played it over the loudspeakers in Tiananmen Square as the army came in to crush their struggle for freedom. It was used in Chile. Women sang a, a version of the song to people in prisons when, church, when they knew that torture was occurring in Pinochet's Chile. Um, even at the fall of the Berlin Wall, Leonard Bernstein went and conducted the playing of this song with an orchestra as the Berlin Wall was collapsing. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, this ode to joy. What we sing is joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Our closing hymn today was used. People have used it in flash mobs. In, in um, Japan, 
The, the Ninth Symphony is performed hundreds of times each December, oftentimes with 10,000 people in the chorus. And they'll have half of a stadium filled with people just to be able to sing it to the other people and the other half of the stadium where there's another 10,000 people listening. And so the question today is, do you have a Magnificat? What music inspires you to acts of freedom, friendship, and belonging? Because as we think of Mary's Magnificat, and uh, even the Magnificat that we see um, used in uh, Rudder's Magnificat or the Magnificat in F by Harold Friedel, we know that this piece of music is used often. And that um, <clears throat> even what we see um, and we hear these words over and over again. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My soul rejoices in God, my Savior, for he looks with favor on his lowly servant. We also hear these words from this prayer that God will cast down the mighty and will send the rich away empty. And that this huge reversal, this expectation that the, the, the poor will become rich and the rich will become poor, is uh, so entrenched in scripture that when we recognize this as part of God's desire for the world, we recognize that God is a God of liberation. Yesterday was the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the 12th of December every year. And on the 9th of December in 1531, Juan Diego saw the Virgin Mary on the hill of Tupac near Mexico City. It was actually in the ruins of um, one of the main goddesses there near Mexico City. And, he, um, and the Virgin asked Juan Diego to help him build a church there on the top of the ruins that the Spanish had destroyed this temple to the main goddess there. And she advised him to return to the hill to ask the lady for a sign to prove her identity. And the first, uh, first Mary healed Juan's sick uncle. And then on the 12th of December, she told him to gather flowers from the top of the hill where he found roses growing on the barren ground. And she gathered up the roses in his cloak for him to take back to the archbishop. And when he opened his tilma to show the roses, they fell to the floor and then image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which you might have seen um, with her, um, with radiance around her uh, in a very humble posture with her hands together, uh, remained on the inside of this cloak. And so it's a, um, it's a recognition that Our Lady of Guadalupe, who's also called the mother of perpetual help, was the help that the indigenous people were looking for as they were um, experiencing the colonization of the Spanish people. And she has become a, a figure, especially for the most oppressed in Central and South America that people pray um, to God through Mary for the help that they need. And um, recognizing that God did this for Juan Diego, that God might also do it for us. And so when we think of the Magnificat, we also, <clears throat> there are certain parts of the Magnificat that's very similar to the appearance of Our Lady of Guadalupe to Juan Diego. This Magnificat has been a part of the church's liturgy since the earliest days for centuries. Members of religious orders have recited or sung these words on a daily basis. And it is among the longest set of words spoken by a woman in the New Testament. It is also the first Christmas carol ever composed. And parts of Mary's Magnificat echo the song of Hannah that we see in 1 Samuel 2. Um, that when Hannah uh, recognized that she was going to be able to have a child through the power of the spirit and was willing to give this child to become a prophet um, Hannah is, is Samuel's mother, the, um, and she also prays in a very reminiscent way of the anguish of the prophets. And this prayer was used even in the past century. There were three separate instances of governing governments who have banned the public recitation of the Magnificat because they feared that its message was so subversive. During the British rule in India, the Magnificat was prohibited from being sung in church. In the 1980s, Guatemala's government discovered that Mary's words about God's preferential love for the poor to be too dangerous and revolutionary. They banned it there. Her words were inspiring the Guatemalan poor to believe that change was indeed possible. 
And even the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo, whose children all disappeared during the dirty war in Argentina, placed the words of Mag the Magnificat's words on posters and the military junta of Argentina outlawed any public display of Mary's song. Did you know that parts of the scripture were banned in these countries, even in the last hundred years for being so radical and, um, and really attempting to turn over the powers that be into the kingdom of God. Even Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German pastor who was executed by the Nazis, wrote this about the Magnificat, that it is the most passionate, the wildest, one might even say the most revolutionary hymn ever sung. This song has none of the sweet, nostalgic, or even playful tones of some of our Christmas carols. It is instead a hard, strong, inexorable song about collapsing thrones and humbled lords of this world, about the power of God and the powerlessness of humankind. These are the tones of the women prophets of the Old Testament that now come to life in Mary's mouth, he says. So when we, we recognize that this radical prayer is a part of our tradition and that people have used it to cry for liberation, it's... It shouldn't surprise us that indigenous people today, even here in the San Francisco Bay Area, like my friend Rafael Jesus Gonzalez, who just wrote this prayer to Tonansin, the mother of all that that of you lives, be, dwells, inhabits, is, mother of all the gods and the goddesses, mother of us all, the cloud and the sea, the sand and the moss and the tree, the might and the whale, Spilling flowers make of my cloak a reminder that we never forget that you are the only paradise of our living. Blessed are you, cradle of life, grave of death, fount of delight, rock of pain. Grant us, mother, justice. Grant us, mother, peace. When, when we are in, most in need, we often pray for our mothers. Even George Floyd, when he was suffering under the knee of that police officer, asked for his mother. So the question for us today is what little part of you will, pl will play in the liberation of someone else? What song of freedom do you sing for others? In Mary's revolutionary song, God respects the poor, exalts the poor, cares for the poor, feeds the poor, remembers the poor, and helps the poor. This is the rhythm of God. God has a preferential option for the poor, especially in this life and for the next life. This is the rhythm that God desires of us as we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Does our heart get into that same rhythm of respecting the poor, exalting the poor, caring for the poor, feeding the poor, remembering the poor, helping the poor? So the question for us this morning, has God's revolution occurred in our lives? Is God's revolution occurring in your life? When Jesus gets a hold of us, Jesus revolutionizes our life. He turns everything upside down and we look at the world very differently and turns our me into we. Instead of just thinking about our own problems, we are taught in this scripture and throughout the scriptures to think of what are the needs of those around us? How can we find the solution together? And how can we think of in terms of we and not just me? For us to be able to live out this life of faith, for us to be able to even hear this melody of liberation, whether it comes through Mary or Our Lady of Guadalupe or Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, we are encouraged to be the church and to think not just of ourselves, but to love our neighbor, to love the children, to love creation, to protect the environment, to care for the poor, to forgive often, to reject racism, to fight for the powerless, to share our earthly and spiritual resources, to embrace the diversity of the whole of God's family, to love God and to enjoy this life. That's what it means for us to be the church, especially during this time of pandemic. Amen. 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 Believe with a hopeful heart. Believe and shine your light. 
believe because the song we sing is sung for all. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what our God has done for us. Believe, believe, believe. During this time when we're sheltering in place and we cannot offer our gifts in person, we ask that you send your offerings online or via snail mail to Merdell Dibdahl or Paul Fish, whose addresses are in our announcements and e-blasts. And now, from within our homes, we bring to God the offerings of our hearts and lives. May our gifts be used to bring hope, healing, freedom, and sustenance to those in need. And now let us pray to bless our gifts. Holy God, from our homes we give and we pray that your blessing will fall upon our gifts so that through our offerings, your spirit of love and compassion, your spirit of joy and hope may flow into the world. May our gifts Bring your gift of love to those who receive them. In your many names we pray. Amen. 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 And in the spirit of resistance, let us sing together, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, Call us to rejoice in thee. Mortals join the happy chorus which the morning stars began. Love divine is reigning o'er us, joining all in heaven's plan. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Let us send each other forth back into our homes, back into our lives, back into our preparations for Christmas with these words. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wake, wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. So take this radical prayer, take this radical song and let it become the heart song of your heart. Let it be the song that inspires you to acts of liberation for people you don't even know. Let it be the heart song that inspires you to be the best Christian that you can be. 
Let this song be your inspiration for joy, even in the midst of pandemic, for relationship and community, even in the midst of isolation and lockdowns. Let this be the song that helps you through this season so that we may live out what it means to be followers of the Christ. Let us continue to pray through all of the saints, through all of those whose lives inspire us to be the people of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry you didn't get to see the great images I had for you, but they're uh, uh, they're out there. If you just look up, um, go to YouTube and search for We Resist by Mark Miller, and that will be another song that you can take with you. We resist, we resist, um, to be able to live into this spirit of this scripture and these scriptures that we heard today and the radical nature of what it means to be a follower of Jesus in the world today. Thanks for being a part of our service today and thanks for being a part of our congregation. Go out and share this love and joy, uh, peace with everyone that you meet this week. Be well. Amen. And I just wanna say thank you guys for the cards. Thank you for the birthday wishes. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi, mommy. Uh, Hi, Rose. It was a good birthday. Hi, uh, Hi Jen. Hi, Ingrid. <laughs> good to see everybody. Good to see all yes, of you. you. Yes, yes. Nice to see you. And Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Beautiful service. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Janet. Okay. The next Sunday.